Okay, so what is really going on here? This is a well-known clip. It is Bill Clinton playing the saxophone on Arsenio Hall in 1992 before sitting down for an interview. It is just political legend. Bill Clinton won the election because of that saxophone. That was the uh, TMZ guy talking about it. I told you this was a mainstream idea. But why? I mean, how could something like this win the election? I researched it. I looked at the newspaper clippings and watched the rest of the show and saw a lot of Bill Clinton playing the saxophone. And I think that what really happened when Bill Clinton played the sax on Arsenio is a lot more interesting than the story we've been told. I've got a surprise. This is Uptown Bill. He was only $30 on eBay, which honestly, I think is a good deal. Watch him move and groove to the soulful sounds of his sax. Okay, so back to the story. I'm gonna give you the cynical explanation first, that the saxophone performance was part of a calculated political strategy. But to understand that, you don't just need to know about blowing. You have to understand a giant sucking sound going south. <laughs> just look at Bill's reaction there. He kind of loves Perot. <laughs> You can tell. Okay, so if you don't know, this is Ross Perot. And in 1992, he was the third party candidate. He ended up taking an honestly incredible percent of the vote. But it was even more incredible early on. These are the Gallup polls during the election. Look at June 1992. Perot was in the lead. Everybody was thinking, is this guy actually going to win? And so time wise, this is really important. June 2nd is when Clinton pretty much won the nomination. So he has a quick decision to make. How does he carve out a political identity for himself against an incumbent president and a surprisingly strong third party candidate who definitely knows how to get media attention? I love this. Nobody else will even talk about it. As I've, I've said, it's like a crazy ant in the basement. Everybody knows she's there, but nobody talks about it. And literally the day after he wins the nomination, He's on Arsenio Hall playing a saxophone. By the way, he had to actually stand in the background during the rest of the monologue, like he was part of the band. I love the idea of a future president feeling super awkward in the background. Now, the saxophone is a weird, confusing signifier, but I'd argue that the thing Clinton is going for here is, I'm young, I'm cool. Arsenio itself was a new type of late night show. It was syndicated and it was competing against the old guard of shows like The Tonight Show. This was a new youthful place for a presidential candidate to show up and he continued it. Very shortly after, he shows up for an hour long interview on MTV, which, well, you know, young people used to watch cable and MTV used to be the channel that they used to watch. Little context is necessary there. I'm not gonna lie, Clinton's youth references need a little work. What was your first rock and roll experience? Oh, uh, going nuts over Elvis Presley. <laughs> but just in case you think that June 1992 was just him courting kids, this was actually like a blitzkrieg for political branding for Bill Clinton. And he was also going way to the center with his sister soldier moment. You had a, a rap singer here last night named Sister Soldier. If you haven't heard this term, it is kind of a political trope that is based off a controversy with the writer and musician Sister Soldier. She told the Washington Post about a month ago, and I quote, if black people kill black people every day, why not have a week and kill white people? Clinton gave a speech that was sort of controversial at the time because it pushed back against her. And when people say that, if you took the words white and black and you reversed them, you might think David Duke was giving that speech. He was showing that he was a centrist. It's become kind of a political move to do this, to push back against the fringe of your own party so that you can establish yourself in the center. So let's recap this crazy June 1992. Clinton gets the nomination, but he has to immediately scramble to beat Bush and Perot. So he says, I'm willing to have this sister soldier moment, but I am also gonna be young, I'm gonna be cool, 
In fact, his saxophone obsession is so clearly a masterful political move that he even forms something called the Saxophone Club. It is a special group trying to attract younger donors who might not have as much money as older donors but are still enthusiastic about the campaign. So this sax thing is the most transparently political move ever, right? I think it's like a little more complicated. Okay, so I opened him. Uh, I don't think he works. So I have to actually manipulate his body myself to make him groove and move. So, so here's the thing. I think Bill Clinton played the saxophone for political reasons, but I also think that he really, really, really likes the saxophone. Recently, people have been making a big deal about President-elect Bill Clinton playing the saxophone. He had a murderer's row of saxophonists at his inauguration, which was hosted by Will Smith. I did not know that. Uh, and then he played at his own inaugural ball. Okay, I know what you're thinking. This could still be political. It's all very public, but there's a little more evidence than that too. First, here he is in April playing it well before the Arsenio appearance. And he kept it going way after. He had a music room. Here he is playing it for the troops at Camp Casey. World leaders are always giving him saxophones and he's like, sweet, I will play this saxophone now. He did it with Boris Yeltsin and perhaps most famously, Vaclav Havel, the Czech president, gave him a sax. Clinton went on stage at this super famous jazz club and he had a jam session with the saxophone. Now, somebody released a bootleg album of him playing at this club and the critics were like, ah, he's not that great. But still, he's clearly kind of into the saxophone. If you are still not convinced, I now present to you the strongest argument that Bill Clinton is actually obsessed with the saxophone, which is his love affair with the man named Kenneth Gorlick. Who is Kenneth Gorlick? Well, you might know him better as Kenny G. Kenny G is the most famous smooth jazz saxophonist of all time, and Bill Clinton loves him. Kenny's at the inauguration, but he's elsewhere too. Bill gushes over him in that same MTV interview where he's trying to appeal to all the young people. If I could play in any band, any which band. one would it be? I would play with Kenny G so I could learn something. Yeah. I got to play with him last week, by the way. It was a real highlight of the whole California primary. It was great. <laughs> then in 2000, Clinton has Kenny G play at a governor's ball well after Clinton's presidential campaigns are over. And even in that 2022 TMZ clip that I showed in the beginning, Bill Clinton actually goes back to bring up Kenny G in the conversation. I, but I sent, I told Kenny G my uh, saxophone, and I acquired one made by Adolf Sax in 1861. And one final piece of evidence, look in the music room. Yeah, enhance. Gorlick, that's Gorlick. Groove! Groove! <sighs> now that that's over, let's talk Schrodinger's politician. I think the instinct with the Clinton story is to come with this takeaway that it's about the celebritization of politics or something like that, but I, I don't really quite buy that. I mean, FDR used the radio, Ronald Reagan was a movie star, Nixon showed up on Laugh-In. Suck it to me? <laughs> There's a million examples of presidents adopting new mediums. Instead, I think this says something unique about Bill Clinton's skills as a politician. Okay, so you probably know about Schrodinger's cat, uh, skipping the nuance, it's sort of a thought experiment that uh, looks into the paradox of quantum superposition. Basically the take home point is that this cat in a box could be dead and alive at the same time. Those two contradictory states could exist simultaneously. I think Bill Clinton playing the sax shows us Schrodinger's politician he is able to be both deeply cynical and poll-driven and 
really calculating, and at the exact same time, he can be totally authentic and personal and purely himself. So let me answer the question about Bill Clinton's appearance on Arsenio. Was it the perfect poll-driven way to appeal to the youth vote at a crucial time in the election? Or was it a deeply personal musical performance, a man playing the instrument that he loved? Yes. Okay, uh, that's it for this one. Um, yeah, I kind of hurt Bill when I threw him. So that's not good. Um, if you haven't been here before, this is a personal channel where I post personal videos, history videos, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'd love to know your opinion on Bill Clinton playing the sax on Arsenio. I'm sure that there are a lot of other opinions out there. Bill Clinton, uh, he, he tends to draw some opinionated uh, discussion and I'm, I'm here for it. Uh, I still enjoyed getting to delve into the history behind this though, learn a bit more about it. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. I'm gonna see if I can fix his head. Shoot.